Good morning, boys and girls. Happy Thursday. Today we are covering Unit 11, the Civil War, chapters 13 and 14. A couple reminders before we begin is don't forget to complete any active assessments on Edulastic. Uh, don't forget to do your I ready math and your reading. Don't forget to complete math and ELA videos and assignments in the packet. And also remember that we are monitoring Go Guardian throughout the week. Please make sure you're using your Chromebook as you would at school. All right, so our agenda today, I'm gonna go over the objectives, what you're expected to learn. I'm gonna read the big question for chapter 13. I will read chapter 13 to you. You're expected to read chapter 14 on your own using the digital copy of your reader attached to this video. And then you're gonna do your independent work. And then I'm gonna say goodbye and give you a few more reminders before we leave. So today we're gonna to learn about the Emancipation Proclamation and about influential generals during the Civil War. So your objective for chapter 13, I can summarize the events that led to the issuing of the Emancipation Proclamation. I can identify and describe the characteristics of the three leading generals of the Civil War, Stonewall Jackson, Robert E. Lee, and Ulysses S. Grant. Our big question for chapter 13, how did the Emancipation Proclamation change the focus of the war? Effort from the Union point of view. Chapter 13, the Emancipation Proclamation. Forever free. When the Civil War began, Lincoln said that the goal of the war would be to preserve the Union, not to end slavery. Indeed, the preservation and love of the Union was the reason that millions of Northerners were willing to fight against the fellow countrymen in the South. It is true to say that Lincoln hated slavery, but he did not state that the reason for the Civil War was to destroy slavery. Why was that? Lincoln had several reasons. Four slave states, Missouri, Kentucky, Maryland, and Delaware, had so far stayed in the Union. They came to be called the border states because they were located on the border of the North and the South. If they believed that the Union school was to end slavery, they would almost certainly join the Confederacy. That would mean their population and resources would leave the Union and become part of the Confederacy. Furthermore, Union armies would have to conquer that much more land to win the war. Lincoln also knew that millions of Democrats and some conservative Republicans in the loyal states would only support a war to restore the Union, not one to achieve emancipation. So emancipation is the act of setting someone free. Keeping Kentucky and Maryland on the Union side was especially important. Lincoln once said, I think to lose Kentucky is nearly the same as to lose the whole game. In other words, the Union would lose the war, losing Maryland posed a different problem. If Maryland joined Virginia and the Confederacy, Washington DC, the capital of the Union, would be completely surrounded by Confederate states. Lincoln had another reason for saying that the Union's goal was only to pursue, preserve the Union. Most Northerners agreed that saving the Union was worth a war. They did not necessarily agree that freeing the slaves was worth the war. Being against slavery was one thing. Being willing to go to war to end it was another. Abolitionists, of course, believed that ending slavery was exactly what the war should be about. However, Lincoln knew he must wait for more Northerners to agree with the abolitionists. Otherwise, he would risk losing the support for the war. By the summer of 1862, President Lincoln felt that it was time, was right, to announce a change in the Union School for the war. This would be a change he hoped would defeat the Confederacy. The moment came when I felt that slavery must die that the nation might live, said Lincoln. The summer he stayed up late writing and rewriting a document called the Emancipation Proclamation. He would announce that as of January 1st, 1863, all slave states still rebelling against the United States 
would be forever free. The Emancipation Proclamation was ready in July 1862. Unfortunately, that was right after the Union armies had suffered a series of defeats. Lincoln Secretary of State William Seward advised him, wait until the Union wins an important victory. Otherwise, announcing the proclamation then would look like a desperate effort to escape defeat at the hands of the Confederacy. Lincoln waited. Antium was not quite the victory Lincoln had hoped for, but he decided it was good enough. President Lincoln had also carefully considered his constitutional authority over slavery. In his inaugural address, he promised that the South, that he had no authority over slavery and could not interfere with it before the war started. However, now that he was the commander in chief of a nation at war, he could use his wartime powers to hurt the Confederate war efforts by freeing the slaves. On September 22, 1862, five days after Antium, Lincoln issued his preliminary Emancipation Proclamation. In it, he stated that if the rebels did not rejoin the Union by January 1863, all slaves in the rebellious states would be set free. When the Confederacy did not act, President Lincoln signed the final Emancipation Proclamation on January 1, 1863, the beginning of freedom. It's important to understand what the Emancipation Proclamation was and what it wasn't. It did not free any slaves in the border states because these states were not rebelling against the United States, nor did it free any slaves in areas controlled by the U.S. Army. If Lincoln had done that, at least three border states would immediately have left the Union. That would seriously weaken the Union's chances of winning the war, and then maybe no slaves would be free. The proclamation freed only the slaves in the 11 Confederate states that were still rebelling against the United States. If the Confederates actually stopped fighting and ended the war before January 1st, they could keep their slaves until the Union armies entered those states. However, Lincoln could say what he wanted, but he couldn't actually free a single slave. That's what some people said the Emancipation Proclamation didn't really mean very much. But these people missed the point. After the proclamation, as long as the Union won the war, slavery was finished. Slaves understood the importance of the, of the proclamation. News of it spread throughout slave quarters all across the South. The proclamation was the beginning of an answer to their prayers for freedom. In the North, the abolitionist and former slave Frederick Douglass wrote, We shall for joy that we live to record this righteous decree. On the other hand, Lincoln knew that his emergency war powers would not last after the war. He needed a constitutional amendment to make the Emancipation Proclamation and the end of slavery permanent in the United States. The Emancipation Proclamation was the most important American document about freedom since the Declaration of Independence in 1776. It was a step forward fulfilling the Declaration's promise that all people should have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. New Year's Day, January 1st, 1863, Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation. As he did, he said, I never in my life felt more certain that I was doing right than and signing this paper. All right, scholars, now it's your job to read about chapter 14, which is about the generals of the Civil War. And your big question for this chapter is, how were the three great Civil War generals alike and how were they were different? So try to see if you can compare and contrast them. All right, so after you're done reading chapter 14, you're gonna go and work on some domain vocabulary for chapters 11 through 15. I have noticed that it seems like the lowest scoring part of our test seems to be on vocabulary, so make sure you're practicing. Here are some, some reminders before we say our goodbyes. Uh, make sure to complete any active assessments in Edge Elastic and double check that you completed all assessments. Um, look for iReady and Math and Reading, make sure that you're doing that. Uh, completing the math and ELA assignments and videos, 
Don't forget that we're monitoring GoGuardian throughout the week and making sure we're using it responsibly. All right, scholars, have a great day.